This is how 2020 has felt. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, everyone. Do you guys want to meet our um, amazing quality budget light? Look at that. Oh, so bright, oh, like Ling Ling's future. Yeah. Ling Ling's future and past and present Ling -ling. is equally bright. Well, put your face in it, it gets really bright. Dude, you're gonna go blind. <laughs> anyway, today's topic is about interpretation. So we're going to be picking two pieces. One is Bach and one is Meditation. Thais, very famous yeah. um, composer, very famous piece. And the idea is we're going to be comparing different recordings to show how different interpretations can be. Interpretation is the way the musician interprets the music to a certain style. There you go, that's Wikipedia. your university degree. <laughs> Guys, we're kidding. Our four year degree was definitely worth way more than that. First one, Bach, Violin. Sonata number one and the first movement, Adagio, so G minor. Uh, we are going to be watching three different artists. recordings, artists. We have a historically informed one, yeah, and a modern one, yeah. and an old school one. I was going to say save the best for last. But which one's the best? Yeah. You guys will never know now. Uh, Let's just start with... Um, old school? Yeah, old school. I think so. Old school, I think so. The OG. So, what does old school mean? It means roughly 1950s yeah. to 19... 80s yes. around that area? And there's no more older school than that because recording wasn't even invented. But Nathan Milstein was one of those um, old school violinists that was very well respected. I would say Milstein and Gromio and Henrik Schering. Yeah, the th those three were yeah. what the old school thought of violin playing seen as the best yes. like, Bach yeah. recordings, yeah. right? Yeah. And here is him playing Bach's Animal 1. <laughs> You would never hear that this today. He went for it. He went for it. I grew up listening to this part. Me too. You too, right? But I forgot it sounded like that. Wow, it's changed the last 10 years already. Even just in the last 10 years, the, the style that people play, play barking has changed a lot. If you're a classical musician, you'll know what we, I, we mean just by listening to that chord. And we're going to demonstrate now for those non-classical musicians. He was like... It was like a romantic chord. It was chord. like a non-apologetic. This is the chord that starts the whole six sonatas. Yeah, bring, it bring is it the on. first. It is the first. It chord is, it's more grandioso. It's like, yeah. bring it on, guys. Here we go. I'm used to that. You guys are here soon. Yeah, we don't spoil yeah. it. Right, let's keep listening to it yeah. a little bit. Oh, that white vibrato. He even did a little bit of a glitch. Yeah. Right? That is very thick. There's been the um, rise of the historically informed performance movement where musicologists and historians, whatever, have done research and found a lot of ancient, not ancient, but like old text yeah. written by musicians around that time that indicated how they thought about music. Yeah. And they'll write things like, you know, the way they thought about vibrato only to be used as an ornament. Yes. Uh, how they don't actually hold notes for necessary for the full intended period, mm -hmm. which is a notation thing. For now, I guess you can just remember this is quite thick. I know people like really look down on it today, but there's a certain yeah, like yeah, yeah. epicness and it just uh, it's very just straightforward. Yeah. It's like he's not trying to pretend, pretend. to be like historically bark. or bark was like I'm gonna unbark yeah. I'm just, just gonna like, play it yeah. like the way I see it yeah what <laughs> yeah he yeah. pressed upwards whoa dude we we'll get what? murdered you would get murdered for playing like that but to be fair though back in Milstein's time they hadn't done the research yes. yet so they... it's just the way as great artists would interpret it so. yeah That's a nice ending. To be fair, even though it's romantic compared to what people would play today, compared to how you play Tchaikovsky, it's still quite oh, yeah, turned yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. It's still, There's still a difference. Yeah. If it was end of Tchaikovsky, it'd be like... Yeah. 
happy girl without yeah. yeah so there is still a difference the next one is someone called rachel podja she's one of the more well-known baroque specialist violins yes okay so first thing you'll notice two things she is playing with a baroque bow mm -hmm. the shape is very different you can see from yeah. the tip it's shorter as well it's the, yeah. the curvature of the wood is different. The wood is like more this way. Now, you'll notice too, but immediately with the Semi. tuning, yeah. it's a semitone lower. Because back then they tuned to 415, roughly. <clears throat> I don't think she's using chin rest. Oh wow, she went all out. Yeah, she's all out, man. Dude, no chin. They, this, didn't, this wasn't invented. invented back then. Yeah. Back then. She's playing with music because back then, it wasn't usual to perform recitals by memory. Liszt started that. Tradition. Oh damn, list! You damn setting the standards so high for piano and strings. Woodwind players today still use with music. Have you noticed? Oh yeah. Woodwind players just can't remember. Ah, just oh! kidding. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just guys. kidding, guys. Music brings people together. Yeah. She rolled it. Yeah. It's a lot more. Warm. You also hear from the warmth of the sound, she's probably using gut strings. Yes. Gut strings, yeah. You don't want to know. But it's yeah. made out of gut. Yeah. Go yeah. figure. Yeah. Go to Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more improvisational. The still playing the notes and even some people argue that because you know some people argue yeah. you can add ornamentation but she's seeing it as there's the chords and the lines in between are almost improvisation yes it's like these pillars between you freely kind of move yes the argument is that the rhythm for this style of movement not all if it was a uh, you fugue can't, you yeah, wouldn't you be can't, you can't do the fugue, yeah. but for like an adagio like this it is meant to be played with and improvise yep. the star. I want to listen to the end, see how she ends it. I just want to say, if you're really going all out and playing with a vibrato, it's so hard to not get shaky by on bar. Yeah. Without the vibrato as well, sometimes it's hard for me to make it sound nice. Yeah. The tone, sometimes it sounds very like, <clears throat> but to be fair, she's using gut strings. So we got steel strings, they're yeah. naturally a bit more brighter. So. No. I think the best way I would describe it is when you don't have vibrato at all to help your tone sing, your bow control has to be so immaculate that every note is resonant. <clears throat> yeah. Otherwise, you can hear the crunch. Uh, and your bow has to draw the sound out. Yeah. You can't have this guy backing you up. Yeah. And your intonation can't yeah, hide. Yeah. Oh man. Because, yeah. uh, here's a perfect example, right? I'm crushing a bit. But if I have vibrato. I mean, a uh, good ear can still hear. Right. It's a little bit overpressed, but it's not as offensive. Yeah. Right. Well, she went all out. All right, last one. Janine Jansen. Mm. I mean, not being biased, I didn't say the last one's my, like the best one. They're all pretty good in their own right. So just <laughs> yeah. get it out there. Can I just say, I've personally watched this recording so many times. Oh, I yeah. I think she does such a good job. Yeah. So. Can we just like look at the guy, the Asian guy in the back of his hands like this? Oh, he's ready to judge. He's like, one does not simply play bar. Yeah. Right, so you can see a mix. There's some vibrato to keep it spinning, but it's not. It's almost like they found a little balance. That's beautiful. It's, it's in between. And I, I it personally is, think it's Yeah, perfect you get me. a bit of both worlds. Yeah. For us anyway. It's subjective. Subjective, who cares? Who cares? Enjoy it. Also, keep yeah. in mind, this is an encore. She's busting this out after like a concerto. Live. Live performance. Yeah. So if you mess up a bark after a whole concerto, it that's the your whole thing. Yeah, it ruins your whole thing. And out of all the barks, she picked this one. Yeah. You could have done like a... So much safer. The safer. Oh. She goes. Oh. Shaky bug galore. Yeah. Oh. oh, that's nice. 
Hatte er Tannis so She has those moments of release, but yet she still gives you a bit during this juicy dissonant mm. chords. Janine, stop playing with our emotions. The yeah, color right. changes. Yeah. And she's not overusing vibrato. It's just, do you just have more access to different colors when you have You vibrato? do. From what I heard, I'm not an expert. Yeah, we don't know. Guys, just... Baroque people did use vibrato as embellishment. Yeah. It's not like they completely didn't use vibrato. Whoa, dude, that is some hardcore sh That got goosebumps. I know, just and like... I've heard that like 10 times. That was a ballsy approach. And like, she didn't go ballsy. for it, she went... She backed away. She backed away to wrap it up. Yeah. It's the Damn. frog. It's the yeah. frog. <laughs> Do you know how heavy it is here? It's like, no sound. And you're like choking, you're like... Ah! Right, next one's meditation. Let's do Van Groff first. Okay, yeah. Van Groff is closer to, you know... What we do today. What we do today. And before we do, accent that like button. Ow, that kind of hurts. That's tricky, guys. Are you guys? Are you guys hearing this? Yeah, it's freaking like. <laughs> <laughs> I choke. And also the color change to the E and the F. Mm -hmm. Deep. This is kind of what we would probably play like. Play yeah. like today, or what we would want to play like. Yeah, well, yeah, what we wish we could play <laughs> like. Yeah, we like. tried. Okay, now, now we. Oh god. Elman. 1962. None of you were bought. Okay, some of you guys are, but majority of you. I'm sorry. To... Dude, this is like shot on a potato. It's a one pixel. <laughs> <laughs> one pixel. That's all we have of the guys, old school recordings. Man. Dude, I was a slap in the face. Bow. So wake up, guys. This is our pop, their pop music. Bro, it just went... This is more... Yeah, like that. <laughs> they do that a lot more back then, this kind of... Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the portamento, yeah. and like the hitting the string. Oh, that gliss. And then, and then it's also so matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the music says this, we just do this. Do, 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 do. Yeah. It's a yeah. Milstein's bar. Yeah. yeah. Playing around. Oh, dude, dude it's like dude. a high rev engine. <laughs> did it take a few more bows than necessary? Yeah. Oh, also, back in the days, they did play a lot more at the tip. Yeah. Now we're using a bit more of a frog. Yeah. This is so interesting. Times have changed I've forgotten. so much. I've forgotten how much has changed. Guys, this is like 10 years. I was like 15 years ago when Eddie and myself were always listening to these people. Yeah. Milstein, Grimio, Heifetz, you know, all those artists. The great artists you see today all listen to these people. Mm. It's still changed so mm. much. It's so interesting. We definitely encourage you to check out a range of different recordings. Listen to how different uh, times have changed and also just the types of interpretations you can have in the same piece of music. It's so creative. I think it's also, if you learn an instrument, it's one of the best ways to inspire your mind to think outside the box. True. This, this definitely did. Just, yeah. It just hit me. I'm like, whoa. Anyway, uh, please like and subscribe.